Okay. So to start this project, I'm going to go ahead and tape off the inside of my cup. And you can use masking tape or electrical tape. I'm just going to tear off little pieces and then wrap it around just to protect the epoxy from dripping onto the spinet machine. And then I'm just going to work my way all the way around the cup. And I do it in um, sections because if you don't, you'll get um, bare spots that won't stick to your cup because of the curve of the cup. And you want to make sure that it's completely protected from the epoxy. Okay. So now I have it taped off and you can see it's just all the way around the cup. And now it's ready to be put on the machine. And like I said, you can use masking tape or electrical tape for that, either one that you prefer. So I'm gonna turn the machine off and adjust my cup onto it. When you get your machine, it'll have these, let me take this off, I've got it already adjusted pretty snug. It'll have this arm on it you wanna make sure that they are all shaped correctly. They all have that bend, that it'll kinda of look like the letter M. And then you can adjust the size at the top gear. You also wanna make sure that it's absolutely tight so that it is not going to slip off of the spinning machine itself. So you can adjust it at the top gear. I've got it as tight as I want it to go. And then I'm gonna get it pretty close. And now I'm gonna turn on the machine and make sure that it is level. Now I've done this enough to where I can kind of tell when it is level, but to make sure that it absolutely is, I spin the machine with the dial um, facing towards me and then adjust the cup to make sure that it's spinning correctly. Okay. And don't rush yourself on this step because this, this part is so important to make sure that your cup is going to cure correctly and cure smoothly because your epoxy is self-leveling. So it will pull to one area or the other if it is not completely level. And from the side of it, it looks good. I don't know how it looks from the top, but from the side, it looks like it's spinning good. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna move that up to the top and then I'm going to go ahead and start to mix my epoxy. Anytime that I'm going to touch epoxy, I go ahead and put my gloves on because it is a chemical. You don't want it to get onto your skin. It can cause a reaction. Normal reactions to epoxy are topical, so that means that it's going to be on your skin. If you have any reaction to epoxy, you'll know um, it's usually not like a respiratory reaction. It's more um, blotchiness or itching on your skin. So I'm just gonna cover everything up and then get my supplies here. I have two cups, one for part A and one for part B, one for part of the hardener and one for the resin. How I make sure that I never get my epoxy on the wrong ratio is to sit them by the cup that they're going to go in. And then that way I know that I'm not going to get them mixed up. I try to never separate one cup from the other. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'm just going to pour a part of the hardener into one cup. And like I said, I'm pouring a little extra because I do want it to go into the mold. Art resin epoxy goes so much further than alumilite <clears throat> in fact of coverage. You use so little um, with art resin. So I have two parts um, measured out and I just wanna make sure that they're absolutely equal. So 
I'll get down to eye level, make sure that they are, and then they are ready to mix together. Now one side is going to be thinner than your other side, and that's usually the side that I'll pour into the other cup. And then you just want to make sure you scrape the sides like cake batter because it will stick to the side of your cup and you want to make sure to get every drop that you can. It is so important that you really evenly mix your epoxy. With epoxy, that's another step that you don't want to um, rush yourself. You want to make sure that it is absolutely mixed together correctly and well. And the way that you can tell is when we're first starting to stir our epoxy, it's cloudy. And then as we mix it, it's going to get clear. Can you guys still see everything okay? I wanna make sure that you can see. If not, we can start the live over. Okay, and then I'll just go around the side of the cup to make sure that it all gets mixed together. And as you're mixing, you may see these little bubbles inside of your epoxy. The good thing about the summer coming up is that it will be easier to mix your epoxy um, than it is in the winter time. But one way that you can get all, rid of all those bubbles is to just bring you out a bowl of warm water and mix your epoxy uh, up and let it sit in it for just a few minutes. Another way that people uh, get rid of those bubbles is after they put their epoxy on the cup, they may blow um, a torch over the epoxy, just super, super short light burst. And then that way it gets rid of all those little micro bubbles. So now that we have our epoxy mix and it's good and clear, we're ready to put it on our tumbler. I have a pink silicone mat that I use. The good thing um, about silicone is that epoxy will not stick um, to anything that is silicone based. So this is silicone. I put it up under my workspace every time that I use um, epoxy and so it won't drip onto my machine. I can just peel it off of the mat. So for this first layer, while I'm putting my epoxy on, I'm gonna put a piece of paper and it's gonna catch any drips of the epoxy that may um, come down from the cup. So for this epoxy method, like I said before, it's just a super, super thin layer. And I'm just going to work it around the cup. It takes so, so very little. You're just basically giving it a surface to stick to. So I have poured the epoxy on two times. And this may actually be enough. This mat came from Amazon and I'll link that for you guys in the description. It was super cheap and I've used it time and time and time again. And like I said, the good thing about it is that the epoxy, if it falls onto it, um, you can just peel it off. So as it spins, like I said before, epoxy is self-leveling. So it'll kind of travel to the spots that don't have the epoxy or that it may be more bare um, than the other spots. So that's why you have to have it on some kind of turning motor is so that epoxy can cure evenly. And then I just put it, if it's too thick, I'll just put it right back into the cup. 
The main goal here is just to have a very thin layer and that is covered evenly. Just be mindful of any ridges that your cut may have. This is an Ozark Trail Tumbler from Walmart from the camping section. It's stainless steel and then I just painted it this lavender with any type of spray paint. Okay, now we've got a very, very thin coat of epoxy and we're ready for our glitter. So the reason why I put this piece of paper down is you can see all the epoxy that has dripped. And then I will put another piece of paper down to catch all of my glitter that I'm about to sprinkle on my cup. And I'm so excited to use this. Like I said, this is the Holly Molly glitter from Peachy Olive. So you just wanna start out with a super light sprinkle. And the good thing, like I said, another good thing about this um, spinet tumbler turner, let me take my glove off so I'm not getting epoxy on my machine, is that it's light enough that you can just lift up and do the bottom. I usually do the bottom first, and so that way, um, the glitter, you're, you're not getting any really waste. Okay, so the, so the bottom is covered. Put the cut back down. And we're ready to sprinkle on the rest of the cup. I wasn't sure how this would look on this lavender base, but I really, really like it. And then that way, most of my glitter is going to go onto this paste, piece of paper, and then I can just put it back into um, my shaker. This shaker came from Bactus Customs, and your uh, coupon will work on them. and then just work your way around the cup until you have full coverage. Most of the time, um, if you've got a really thin layer and you sprinkle on a lot of glitter, your glitter will just fall off onto the paper. But the reason why you want a super, super thin coat is that if it is too thick in some areas, your um, glitter will create really rough spots and I try to be mindful of those um, before I leave the, the cup. If there's any problems with rough spots or um, blank spots, and then that way uh, you can go ahead and try to fix it before your cup is finished and cured. All right. So the verdict on this Holly Molly glitter is that it is so precious. I love this lavender base. I wanted it to be a super light color base because I wanted it to really reflect that purple. And it is so pretty. So I think it turned out really good. And then after I'm finished, I can just take this glitter off and then pour it back into my um, container. So that's it guys, we have a finished tumbler. I will let this spin for six to eight hours, then I will do another coat of epoxy. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask them in the comments. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe for more tutorials. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I can't wait to see your tumblers and what you create. Be sure to tag me on Instagram or on Facebook, and I will see you guys soon.